Hello, everyone. I am very pleased to welcome you all at Open Day at the doctoral school here at the WUST. Uh, my name is Zuzanna Pavlak. Uh, I am music and uh, program director here at WUST Radio Luz. But today I will be hosting the meeting that uh, hopefully will answer all of your questions you might have about doctoral school, uh, including admission rules, the interview format, and all of the, the important facts that for sure will be useful for someone that is interested in um, pursuing the third degree studies and reaching the PhD in technical studies. And now I would like um, to introduce you uh, to our today's experts, and they will share the most uh, important information regarding uh, PhD experiences. First of them is, of course, the Dean of the Doctoral School here at WUST, Professor Krzysztof Walkowiak. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Professor Agnieszka Włomańska, Vice Dean of the Doctoral School. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Aleksandra Kitmarek, PhD student. Good afternoon. Nice to see you with us. Good afternoon. And last but not least, uh, today with us, there is also Natalia Tyszkiewicz, PhD student and uh, president of the Doctoral Students Council. Good to see you, Natalia. Good afternoon. Uh, so in front of me, I have a number of questions for all of our wonderful guests today. And also, if you, dear, particip dear participants, uh, if you are interested in um, some more important questions, if you have some important questions, uh, you can feel free to ask via chat room on uh, via uh, chat on YouTube uh, live. And let me start with a very general overview on doctoral studies, and I hope it will help us um, to draw a bigger picture about today's topic. Um, first question is a question for Professor Valkowiak. What does it mean to be a doctorate at the doctoral school? Okay, so according to Polish law, the doctoral school is the default way to obtain the PhD. All doctoral students of our doctoral school, they receive the scholarship, including also foreigners. Moreover, education at our doctoral school is free, so there is no NFE. And uh, in general, our doctoral school is quite similar to systems in other countries providing doctoral education. With the same goal, it means that we uh, would like to prepare doctoral students to write the doctoral dissertation and finally to obtain the PhD degree. So to obtain this goal, as a doctoral school, we offer a wide offer of various courses, including soft skill courses, for instance, how to write publications, how to present at the conferences, as well, we, as, well as we also provide uh, hard skill courses. For instance, my field is computer science. Also for doctoral students in this field, we provide some courses, for instance, on, on machine learning. And uh, Another important issue is that as a doctoral school, we are trying to uh, uh, make some incentives for doctoral students to work on the PhD dissertation. So we have a system of reports. And during the first two years, uh, doctoral students has to submit a report every semester. After the second year, every year. So checking the progress, checking the reports, we know uh, how the doctoral students are working. However, it should be underlined that most of the time the doctoral students spend uh, at the faculty and department of the supervisor just making research, research which is necessary to prepare the doctoral dissertation. So all the facilities are provided by, by the faculties and departments. And maybe now is a good moment also to, to tell you a little bit more about uh, what should be the final uh, result of doctoral education. It means the doctoral dissertation. So. Uh, First, some formal information. According to Polish law, the doctoral dissertation demonstrates the candidate's general theoretical knowledge in a discipline and the ability to conduct research and work independently. And second, the subject matter of the doctoral dissertation shall be an original solution to a scientific problem. So in general, it could be quite similar to master thesis, but it is much more complicated because first of all, uh, the doctoral education and preparation of the doctoral dissertation usually takes four years, so much longer than the master thesis. And it is very important that you should find uh, 
a research topic, a research challenge that should be quite novel, and you should solve this uh, research problem using uh, research methods. And uh, what are the steps to write the doctoral dissertation, which are quite similar as the steps which are necessary to prepare uh, publication. So usually we start with literature review. So we have a topic uh, and we are looking for some, sometimes even hundreds of papers to check what is the state of the art in the field we, we focus on. The second step is to formulate a research problem, including some research questions and hypotheses. Yes, so it is the, the main uh, problem that we want to solve in our dissertation. This problem should be novel, since we are a technical university in many cases, it has some practical aspects, and it should add some, some new knowledge comparing to the previous uh, publications we already analyzed in the previous steps. Next step is to propose a method to solve the formulated research problem. And the methods could be quite different uh, among the disciplines. So for instance, once again, computer science, now the most popular are probably deep neural networks, but in different disciplines, there are different methods, including some experiments and many others. Then we should make the experiments using the method we implemented, uh, some simulations and other elements. And having the obtained data, then we analyze the data to draw some conclusions, to find some trends, and so on. Not always it is so easy. Sometimes we must repeat some experiments or maybe change the research method because uh, the obtained results are not satisfactory. And the final step is to uh, describe everything, so to write the publications or the doctoral dissertation. And what is important, as a doctoral student, you need to combine all of the skills. So maybe some of you, you like a lot some experiments. Okay, that's very good, but you must be aware of the fact that also you must combine some other skills to have the final result in, um, in a form of doctoral dissertation. But once again, as a doctoral school, uh, school, we are trying to support you and to provide you some skills. Uh, and what is also important, the system in Poland is based on scientific disciplines. There are about 50 of them in Poland. At our university, we offer doctoral education in 13 scientific disciplines, the same disciplines in which our university has the right to award the PhD degree. And they are mostly like technical disciplines, but also we have some basic uh, uh, science disciplines like mathematics, physics, chemistry, and also management sciences. So they more or less cover or quite, they are quite similar to the faculties offered in our um, uh, university. And at this moment also, I usually uh, encourage all candidates to try to check what is the doctoral dissertation. Yes, so you can Google on our website as the university, on the uh, Google Scholar and other, in many other places, you can find examples of doctoral dissertation just to be aware what is the expected result uh, after four years. Because uh, after many talks with candidates, not all of them are aware what, what is a doctoral dissertation. Okay, so to summarize this, this first question, as a doctoral school, we try to create an environment that supports you in, in many different uh, aspects. And try, we are trying to help you to, uh, for your doctoral dissertation work and to finally obtain the PhD degree. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. That was a very insightful answer. And now we are glad to have our two PhD students with uh, us today, and they will share uh, their general experiences on studying uh, at WUSD. Um, I'm really interested, why is it worth pursuing a doctorate at the Doctoral School of Wrocław University of Science and Technology? Um, Natalia, could you tell us more about it from your perspective? Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, we are one of the largest uh, doctoral school in Poland, so uh, I think that it's uh, really uh, important and uh, studies in um, our doctoral school now uh, in, are conducted in English, which improves uh, language skills and prepares study, uh, students for uh, international uh, collaborations. Uh, PhD students have the opportunity to take parts, uh, part in additional uh, language courses and sports activities. Uh, additionally, amount of the scholarship at our university is one of the highest in uh, Poland, uh, especially at the beginning of the doctorate. Uh, PhD students can also apply for additional scholarships for academic achievements uh, and uh, also for other activities in the doctoral community. Uh, 
Uh, our university is also a member of the UNITE program, uh, which is the university network for, for innovation, technology and engineering. Uh, it is a network that uh, connects uh, nine European uh, universities and this project also includes uh, activities uh, related to the management of the doctoral school. And uh, the last thing uh, is that the Doctoral Students Council organizes many events to integrate the uh, doctoral community, which is not so common in the uh, other universities in the country. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And how about uh, you, Alexandra? Um, so uh, Natalia already said everything uh, so perfectly about the uh, numbers and the figures, the official stuff. Uh, I'd like to say something more personal. For me, it is a great opportunity to work with great scientists. Uh, and I don't mean only the professors, but also the other PhD students. Uh, we have access to various labs, software we want. Um, if somebody needs to go somewhere to learn in a different place, there's also an option. And right now there's this uh, new program of mini grants for the PhD students where we can apply for our own small project or if we want to go on a conference or, for example, a study visit. So I think there are many great opportunities here. Thank you so much, Alexandra. That's really good to hear. And we will dig into this topic uh, later on. But right now, let's go back to Professor uh, Balkowiak and now something about uh, the recruitment process. Uh, what are the admission rules for the doctoral uh, school and uh, how should one prepare for recruitment? What uh, applications, what documents uh, are required? So what are the deadlines? Uh, now it's time to, to talk about it. Okay, so first of all, the admission rules uh, to our doctoral schools are accepted by the scene. It was made in December last year. I'm uh, telling you about this because to show that it is quite important document. And in general, according to Polish law, uh, the admission rules is a, a type of a competition. So in our doctoral school for, for this year, we prepared 200 places. It is uh, 50 more than last year. And these places are divided proportionally to the, the 13 disciplines I just mentioned. Yes, so for each discipline, we have a number of places. And all candidates are, are evaluated by a, a recruitment committee, which consists of uh, several professors. And the, the committee uh, makes the evaluation based on five elements. So now I'll go through the, through the criteria. So the first one is just grades from your studies. So usually we are using this uh, cumulative grade point average C CGPA uh, element. And this, uh, this uh, element has a weight of 10%. The second element with 10% weight is command of English. So we require B2 level. And based on, on your certificates, your grades, we assigned uh, some points. So in general, each uh, criteria we assign, the committee assigns from 0 to 10 points. The third element we the committee evaluates is description of the initial concept of the doctoral dissertation. So together with the future supervisor, the candidate should prepare like two pages proposal for the PhD. And the main, the most important two elements uh, that are used to evaluate the candidates is uh, scientific achievements, including different elements depending on the scientific discipline. For instance, publications, conference participation, participation in projects, internships, many others. So all the details are included in the admission rules you can find on our website. Uh, and the weight of this uh, element is 30%. And the last is interview with 40% weight. So this is the most important element. So it is a just talk interview with the, with the committee. So then the committee calculates the points, which should, could be from 0 to 100. There is a ranking list. And for instance, if a, in a scientific discipline we have 20 places, it means that the best 20 candidates, the highest candidates on the ranking list are qualified. Moreover, they must have at least 50 points of this 100, which is because we have such a requirement. Talking about documents you must submit, so you should prepare a CV, which is mostly focused on research activities, a diploma. Here, very important remark. So, if you do not have the diploma of master diploma, it is not a problem because during the recruitment process, you can just submit the document that you plan your 
a master diploma defense. And the final requirement is that hal till half of September, you should provide us the final diploma. So during the recruitment process, you, you can be still a student of the uh, last semester of the second degree status. We also expect the C CGPA with your grades, uh, this initial concept of PhD dissertation, the description, the list of your achievements, and uh, also some documents confirming your, your knowledge of English. And once again, all details, uh, all required documents, all details are available on our website. And they're also available in the IT system that is used for recruitment. Talking about dates, so the IT system will be open May 15 and will be closed June 12. So this is the deadline. And during this time, you should register in the system and then submit all required documents. Some of the documents require also signature of your super supervisor or your future supervisor. So you must uh, prepare this document in advance and uh, please reserve uh, some time to, to gain all uh, required documents. Interviews are planned from June 25 to July 12. It depends on the discipline. And starting from July 25, we, we have the final results and we provide the final results to all candidates. Here, important remark for uh, foreigner candidates. So after to, uh, July 25, we issue a special document, which is called a pre preconditional uh, decision. And with this document, you can apply for Polish visa in the embassy of your country of origin. Okay, that's all from my side uh, for this question. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was all the um, important information, all the details about uh, recruitment process. Let's say it once again. Uh, all of the info important information are also on our website. And right now, let's stick to the recruitment process still, uh, because uh, a few questions for Professor Agnieszka Wilmańska right now. Um, so first, let's share a few details about uh, the interview process. What are uh, um, what aspects are assessed during the interview? Okay, thank you for this question. So during the interview, so mo in most of the cases, the candidates are preparing the presentation, not, not more than 15 minutes. And during this presentation, he or she presents the achievements. They can be achievements obtained during the master thesis, but also the achievements obtained during some project. Because as we know, the, the students and the people, candidate, candidates also take part in some projects. So after that, there is a interview. Uh, so the, the, uh, the committee is asking about the future plans related to the, to the scientific, of course, uh, disciplines or, or and uh, sometimes it is also the exam. I am representing the discipline called mathematics. And in our uh, interview, during our interview, we have some short exam. It is not difficult, but the committee wants to know what are the uh, what is the knowledge of the candidate related to the field that he or she is interested in. And as it was said, the the interview. This is one of the most important aspects of this recruitment process. Therefore, it is good that uh, the candidate will prepare this, uh, this this presentation that I mentioned at the beginning with the potential potential uh, supervisor So, in order to have a maximum number of points. Okay, so that was a lot about uh, a very important stage of recruitation recruitment process, uh, which is an interview. And what about further steps? Does the candidate have to have a potential um, supervisor to be admitted at the doctoral school? How to find one? And also, I would like uh, Professor Agnieszka Wolmańska to cover this question. Okay. So as it was said, of course, it is important to have the potential uh, supervisor because during the recruitment process, uh, the candidate also uh, needs to um, assign uh, so or give the, the document signed by the potential supervisor. So I, I recommend to all of the candidates first to contact with the potential supervisor in order to discuss the potential uh, re research and, and future work. And it was also the question about how to find the potential supervisor. In my opinion, there are at least two ways. The first one uh, this is uh, very, very easy. 
So very often the potential supervisor is a person who was a supervisor of master thesis of the candidate. So it is a natural continuation of the research that was conducted during the master test. Okay, there is also a uh, possibility to find the supervisor in our database. On our web page, you can find the database of supervisors and looking at the keywords, uh, so the candidate can also find the potential supervisor uh, that that will be considered in the in the future. And of course, uh, the the way number three, let's say this the third scenario. Um, one can also contact to the head of the discipline. Of course, first you, uh, the candidate needs to know what is the discipline he's interested in. And this person can contact to the head of the discipline and ask to help in finding the potential supervisor who would be interested in given topic. Uh, and he, of course, uh, the names of the discipline's heads you can find on our webpage as well. So this is also the possibility. Sometimes I know that that candidate contact personally to professors and ask if they are interested to conduct the, the, the research with this, with this uh, person. So there are at least three ways, but maybe four. Okay, thank you so much. Fingers crossed for all the candidates. And now let's uh, go back for a minute to our PhD student, Alexandra, again. Uh, she will explain us how does the recruitment process look like from students' perspective. Um, so first of all, we have to find a potential supervisor. And as it was already mentioned, there are multiple ways. I guess it is much easier for the students of our university, uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology, as we already know most of the professors, but we can also search them using the online database. I've seen also going around the university that sometimes in the corridors there are uh, offers of PhD scholars, so um, that's another option to find one. And uh, so having the potential supervisor, the next step is to develop the concept of the research and define preliminary the research problem we want to solve. But what is important, we don't really have to have our own idea because uh, sometimes our supervisors, professors work in projects and they have some aspects, some tasks that could be done as part of a PhD thesis. So. It doesn't really have to be our own idea. We can offer then something from our side and to study it deeper. But yeah, we can use this option. Uh, for me personally, the worst, the most difficult part was of course the interview because it was a lot of stress. Um, yeah, and the committee will mostly be interested in, as my supervisor told me as a tip, where's the science in the project? So I think that's a good question we should try to answer to each other, uh, to ourselves before the interview. And I think in the end, it will go pretty smooth. Okay, very good question and very good, uh, very informative answer. So let's uh, switch to Natalia right now. And Natalia, please tell me how about uh, your perspective and what uh, was the most difficult for you? Uh, in the recruitation, yeah? Of course. Uh, yeah, so uh, for me, as Alexandra said, the, the worst was the interview, but uh, for from this per perspective, now uh, I'm a fourth year PhD student. Uh, I know that uh, the interview part uh, is really important uh, because um, the committee uh, have the opportunity to um, to ask a lot of questions to uh, candidates and uh, better know th this person. And uh, sometimes when we, um, some, some people um, doesn't have a lot of achievements before uh, starting a PhD. Uh, so it is a really, um, really good opportunity where a committee um, um, have, um, uh, opportunity to um, better um, better know this uh, this candidate and uh, maybe um, this person will have uh, more points from this interview part. So uh, it is really good to to be uh, 
um, to be really good um, prepare for this uh, interview part. Okay, thank you so much. A bunch of useful information once again for our participants today. Now let's go back to Professor Agnieszka Wolomańska. Um, because I have a very general question uh, right now, and uh, what is the curriculum at the Doctoral School of uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology? Okay, so actually in our curriculum we have a two group of courses. So the first one is compulsory courses, and the second one we, there are additional courses. So maybe I will tell you something about the, the type of courses that we offer here. So in the compulsory courses, we have uh, uh, the following uh, the following uh, lectures courses. Recent uh, research trends in the scientific discipline, reporting seminar of scientific discipline, research skills, ethical and legal aspects of the scientific activity, personal development, teaching skills, in, uh, English language, and elective courses. There are two courses that, that, that are elected. And uh, all of the almost all of the courses from the compulsory, let's say, group, uh, need to be finished mm, uh, within first four semesters. The only exception is the reporting seminar of a scientific discipline, because this seminar is is uh, the student, the PhD students needs to take every second semester. In and in most of the cases, the, the most often. It is every summer semester. Of course, everything depends when he or she starts the PhD school. Okay, and actually only two of the courses are strictly re related to the discipline. They are recent trend, uh, research trends in the scientific discipline and reporting seminar of a scientific discipline. The rest of the courses are interdisciplinary courses, meaning that the student, PhD student, can take the courses also for, offered by different disciplines. Okay, and now uh, the elective courses. The elective courses are offered by the uh, by the disciplines, heads of the disciplines. They are giving us the offers, and there are different courses. Uh, they can be specialized courses conducted in various forms. So they are they are lectures, they are seminars, they are also the laboratories. They can be also basic and interdisciplinary courses uh, offered also by different disciplines. They are humanitarian and management courses, uh, but also courses offered by visiting professors. Very often we we invite visiting professors here uh, to our doctoral schools, school. And uh, also the seminars that are in, in given discipline or interdisciplinary seminars. Uh, okay, and now we are going to the additional courses. There are two, let's say, classes. So elective courses, once again, the PhD students uh, can take uh, two courses, uh, elective courses, which are additional courses, and also the uh, additional foreign language. Uh, and it was the classical, let's say, curriculum for the for the PhD students. But we have also the implementation doctorate, meaning that this is a doctorate um, implemented together with the um, with the industry. And in this curriculum, we have a little bit different structure. We have also compulsory courses and additional courses, but in the compulsory courses, we don't have the elective courses. So there is no need to, 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 to select some courses from the elective courses, and there is no need to take the English uh, classes. Uh, the, other, the, the, the other courses and, and structure is more or less the same. And I think this is, this is everything. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much once again for all of those many informations. Uh, right now I have a question for Professor Valkowiak. Um, what is an individual research plan and also what is a midterm evaluation? Okay, so thank you for the question because it is uh, another important question. So in general, the whole doctoral school has several milestones. So the first one is just to start. The second milestone is to uh, select and assign supervisor. This will be in the first three months. And after the first year, every PhD student together with supervisor should prepare individual research plan. And this is a very important document. The main element of this plan is just the schedule, the plan for the next three years, because uh, on default, the doctoral school is for four years. So for every semester, the doctoral students propose some elements that will be implemented, like literature surveys, some experiments, preparation of publications, going to conferences, many others. 
And uh, together with the schedule in the individual research plan at our university, we also require that the doctoral students should prepare, should describe the state of the art, the related work, as well as formulate the research problem and uh, research questions and hypotheses, describe the, the planned research methods and some other elements. So we provide a template and it should be filled by the doctoral student. And it is quite important document. So for instance, my experience as a supervisor is that we start to work on this like at least three months before the deadline, which is the end of end of September. Okay, because it takes a lot of time. And with this document also, the PhD, the planned PhD dissertation is quite well defined. And it is like a roadmap for the next few years. So the next milestone is the midterm evaluation. It is in the half, so after the second year, uh, the implementation of the new research plan is checked by the committee. So the committee includes uh, three professors, one outside our university, and their job is to check the progress. The result of the midterm evaluation is like a binary one. So if it is a positive result, the PhD student can continue uh, the, the education to the school. Moreover, the scholarship is increased. If the result is negative, the PhD student is removed from the doctoral school. Okay, so with this system, we are trying to, to check the progress and have some pressure on the PhD students to work systematically through, through the four years. And uh, some more details about the midterm evaluation. So once again, it is an interview mostly. Sorry for this, but it is the, the main, uh, let's say, tool in research. Yes, yeah, so I'm uh, talking about this because there was some discussion about this interview during the recruitment process. Uh, the PhD student must also prepare a, a type of report to describe what is the progress during the second year. And the committee listens to a 15-minute presentation, and then there is some discussion, okay? And don't be afraid about this discussion because the committee wants to know more. And in many cases, the, the questions, the remarks from the committee are very important because there's some new information for the PhD student. But once again, you should be well prepared, okay? So it is also the the responsibility of the supervisor to prepare the PhD student for the midterm evaluation. So I strongly recommend to have some seminars inside the group. Also, the supervisor should check the report and many other elements. Okay. So with this system, we are trying to um, to make some uh, pressure on PhD students to proceed with the doctoral dissertation implementation. So after almost five years of doctoral school, my experience this is a, a very good system which was introduced just for doctoral schools, because in the previous system in Poland, it was not uh, implemented. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that was Professor Wachowiak, and he makes it all sounds very clear. So we will go back to him for sure. And right now, uh, I will ask uh, Professor Agnieszka Wumańska again, uh, does the doctoral school has some office? Can I find some info important uh, information there? Information. Yeah. Uh, so our office in, is in the main building of our university. So this is A1 building. And the room, the office uh, is in the room 313. So this is the second floor close to the library. I know that this is not uh, easy to find us, but we are there. <laughs> and also the dean and vice deans are also there. So if you if you have some uh, questions or, or you want to find some information, you can also ask us uh, personally. However, the, all of the most important information you can also find on our web page. It's easy to find. In the Google, you will find, you, you, you should write the Doctoral School of Wrocław University of Science and Technology. And the, the, first, the first information is that, uh, about our doctoral school. And on the web page, we have uh, two versions, Pol Polish and English version. And uh, so for candidates, there is a special section for candidates and there are all informations related to the recruitment process, but also other informations like documents and, and other things that are important at this stage, just at, at least. Okay, fantastic. Uh, it is a very good time for me to remind our participants uh, that you can still ask the questions uh, using the uh, chat room on our YouTube live. And right now, let's go back to our students again. Natalia, are there any additional forms of scholarships or research funding available? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, our doctoral school uh, has uh, several forms of additional scholarships and research uh, fundings. 
Uh, in the category, the, the second category, research funding, we have uh, a new project called uh, Mini Grants. Uh, the purpose of the grants is to support the uh, scientific activity of doctoral students related to the subject of their doctoral dissertation in the several categories. Uh, doctoral students uh, may apply for grant funding for of up to uh, 20,000 zlotych. Uh, in the um, first category, the category of scholarships, uh, doctoral students can apply for uh, free scholarships. Uh, first of them is scholarship with an increased amount. Uh, this is for uh, the top uh, 30 of doctoral students. It is awarded for one academic year and uh, it is uh, increasing uh, the scholarship by uh, um, by 15% uh, of the professor's salary. The second one is scholarship from their own fund. It is uh, 50 uh, scholarships per academic year. Uh, and the uh, last one is rector's awards for the doctoral student and uh, it is for uh, 30 winners and uh, in the uh, 2023, the, ma the amount of this uh, scholarship was um, 3,000 uh, slotych one off, and that's all I think. <laughs> okay, but let's stick to your insight uh, for a moment right now, because I'm also interested uh, in what uh, does the typical day at PhD uh, student for a PhD student uh, look like uh, here at the doctoral school of uh, Wrocław University of Science and Technology. Okay, so um, a typical day for a doctoral student uh, usually involves a combination of uh, some activities, for example, uh, research activities, classes, meetings with uh, other scientists, with supervisors, other professors, and also uh, teaching duties. Um, the day may start with uh, conducting uh, research in laboratories or in front of computers, uh, attending classes or seminars, uh, or uh, also participating in some discussions. Um, uh, depending on the stage uh, of uh, the research, uh, students may also uh, spend time analyzing data, writing papers, or uh, preparing presentation for conferences. Um, additionally, uh, they may participate in uh, other activities organized, uh, for example, by uh, Doctoral Students Council or take advantage of the sports uh, facilitates and language classes offered by the university. Um, and um, overall, a PhD student day is usually dynamic and filled with a variety of academic and social uh, engagements. Okay. That is Natalia's insight. Uh, let's switch to um, our second PhD student here. Uh, Alexandra, how about you? How does uh, your day-to-day -day life here look like? It's difficult to describe a typical day because it is very diverse depending on the day of the week. If we have to conduct the classes with the students, which requires usually a lot of preparation before and also after, we can spend the whole day checking the assignments from students. But there are days that we work only on our research, so doing the tests in the labs or trying, I don't know, to write a, something, a paper, prepare for a conference. But there are also days where we spend most of them on different kind of meetings, whether there are project meetings or meetings with different PhD students or friends, basically. Okay, so, let me ask you another question to cover uh, a topic around uh, students' day-to-day -day life here. Um, what about the accommodation um, for PhD students uh, here? Um, so PhD students at our university can apply for a dorm. Uh, from what I know, there is a separate floor in one of the students' dorms that is only for PhD students. And there is an option to either have a single room or a module where you can live with your family. So if you have, if you are married or have children, you can live with your whole family there. Um, detailed information are uh, on the webpage of our department for social assistance, but I'm afraid it's only in Polish at the moment. Um, 
but also there are many opportunities in Wrocław to rent a flat or a room in private, but I think that's more expensive. Okay, unfortunately, but there is a lot about students' facilities, so maybe it's time right now to talk a little bit about uh, students' duties. So what are the main uh, responsibilities uh, of a doctoral student? This is a question for Professor Krzysztof Falkowiak. Okay, so many of the aspects were already mentioned during uh, our meeting, so I will try to summarize. Okay, so the main goal is to prepare doctoral dissertation in four years because based on the doctoral dissertation, the PhD degree could be awarded, okay? And of course, there are many smaller steps to this big final step. And it means that most of the time and most of the responsibilities are focused on the research work. And it was also quite nice described by our PhD students. So it includes writing papers, making research, meetings, discussions, and many other elements. But once again, I will underline that a lot of depends on the scientific discipline. So for me, it was one of the uh, most interesting experiences, how there are differences between the disciplines, because I know my discipline, computer science, but other disciplines have some specific uh, conditions, okay? Uh, as it was also mentioned, you should go through the curriculum and pass the, uh, the courses, but the overall number of the courses we require, it is 285 hours, yeah? so it is not much. It is less than you have during one semester of your first or second degree studies. And as it was mentioned, the courses are just to help you. So I, I hope that all of the courses will be useful for you. Uh, also, we, we should mention that uh, according to, to the regulations, uh, the PhD students also should conduct some classes for students. It is not much. The first year and the fourth year it is 30 hours. The second and the third it is 60 hours. And uh, there are some possibilities to have some reductions on this. And also we must go through the milestones I was describing during the previous questions, like individual research plan, midterm evaluation, uh, the reports every semester, every year. Yes, and as a doctoral school, we are trying to keep everything uh, working. So we remind you about the, the, the milestones, the deadlines, and we are checking uh, the progress. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Back to Krzysztof Walkowiak soon. And one more thing I would like to ask, uh, Natalia, our PhD student uh, here, is also uh, president of the Doctoral Students' Council. So I would like you to tell me um, how to become a member of, uh, of Doctoral Students' Council and what are the main tasks of uh, the person there. Okay, so once a year in October, we organize elections for the Doctoral Students' Council. Uh, so if you want to be a part of the council, uh, you should apply um, uh, in time. Uh, the council consists of seven members who are elected by a vote at a university-wide doctoral students meeting. Uh, the main tasks uh, of the council are to represent the doctoral community at the university stage and uh, also at the national level. Uh, we protect the rights of doctoral students, uh, express opinions on behalf of the doctoral community, uh, promote our community and uh, actively participate in university committees. Um, we take part in decisions uh, that affect the doctoral community. Uh, the next uh, task is to support and carry out uh, scientific and cultural uh, activities for PhD students. Uh, taking care to improve the quality of education in the doctoral school. Um, and I think that finally, uh, and uh, my favorite, we organize integration events for the doctoral community, uh, such as Doctoral Students Day, Doctoral Students Rally, PhD Fest. Uh, also, we are organizing uh, sports activities and general meetings for doctoral students. Thank you so much. Such an important part of uh, WUSD. Another two general questions um, for the Dean of the Doctoral School, Professor Balkowiak. What is an implementation doctorate, uh, which is in Polish, doctorate w drużyniowym? Okay, so I also trying to follow the, the, the chat on the YouTube and there are some questions uh, quite related to this, so I will try to combine also my answer. Okay, so implementation doctorate, doctorate drużyniowy is a ministerial program and what is very important so this 
Finally, they should be the same doctoral dissertation, which follows the same regulations as, let's say, a normal regular doctoral dissertation. So there is no a separate PhD degree for implementation doctorate students. So it is still the same system, the same requirement. So the difference is that in implementation doctorate, the scholarship is founded by the ministry. So there is a special competition. So it means that during the recruitment process, you must uh, participate in two competitions. So one is the recruitment process we already described. The second is applying for the ministerial matter. And uh, it uh, could be quite challenging. And what are the main requirements that are formulated by our ministry? Okay, so the implementation doctorate students, they must be employed, full-time employment in the company during the whole PhD process. So it is one of the main challenges. So you must keep the same employee employer during uh, four years of your PhD study, because switching the, the company during implementation doctorate is very difficult. And during the evaluation process of the proposals submitted to the ministry, they mostly check the topic, the proposed topic of the PhD that must have some aspects of implementation at the company. Okay, so the, the company must have a difficult research problem that should be solved by the PhD student together with the supervisor from the university. So the most, let's say, uh, welcomed system is that the company has a R&D department and the future PhD student is employed in the, uh, the R&D department and he or she is doing some research in the department. Because otherwise it could be problem to combine everything. So for instance, if the PhD student is working at the company and doing something which is not very related to the PhD, he, he or she must do the, the research for dissertation after hours so and usually there is not enough time for this because also people have some families and other elements okay and so what are the benefits of the system okay so you keep the, the salary from the company plus the scholarship you have the support from the supervisor from the university and also from the company but there are also challenges as i said if you are doing something else for the company for the phd it could be a big problem okay Another challenges are that, for instance, once again, in my field, computer science, four years, it's a very long period. So it can happen that after two years, the company stops a project because maybe another company made it better or there is no any business uh, benefits for the future. Okay, So there are many threats for the doctorate, uh, industrial doctorate. Okay? And on the chart, there are also some questions. Is it possible to combine working at the company and doing PhD? Because in you can do the default normal way of PhD together with working at the company and officially there are no any restrictions but we as supervisor know that uh, you need a lot of time to complete the PhD the dissertation so usually in, in other countries it takes three to four years and it's like full-time job okay so if you spend for the doctoral dissertation not let's say six eight hours per day but only two two hours usually it takes much more time and it's much more challenging and finally, the level of the research you are doing and the level of the final dissertation is not so, so good. And once again, the longer you are doing the dissertation, uh, there is a bigger threat that the topic becomes outdated and it is a problem to publish the, the, the results. You okay, and currently we are waiting uh, for the decision of the ministry about the next edition. So just today we received some information from the ministry that the next edition of the industrial doctorate is planned. They will, they will be probably some small changes which will be published in, uh, in April or in beginning of May. So on our website, for th those of you who are thinking about industrial doctorates, we have a, a schedule um, uh, and the first deadline is the end of April when you should submit some proposal for the industrial doctorate. And then in May, we are preparing, we are doing a special meeting for all candidates to describe the elements because as I said before, you also have to prepare a proposal for the ministry. It's like a writing project, so it takes some time. And you must be very well prepared because there is a competition. Last year, the successful ratio was like uh, 30%, so it was not so easy to get the, the funding. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for all the important details about uh, implementation doctorates, which is uh, Dr. Adetrzeniowy in Polish. Uh, we are coming close to the end of the meeting. So one more question uh, for uh, Professor Krzysztof Balkowiak. Uh, what are the job perspectives after, uh, after completing uh, PhD? Okay, there's also such a question at the, the chat. Okay, so in general, uh, the motivation is very important. So for, for instance, me as a supervisor, if I, if I have a candidate, usually I try to ask what is the motivation of the young person to make the PhD, okay? Because as we are talking, it is not 
easy uh, career path, you need four years to prepare a doctoral dissertation, to write publications and so on, okay? And in general, after PhD, there are two uh, possible uh, career paths, academia and industry. So first I will focus on academia. And uh, I have some uh, statistics uh, from our doctoral school. So among those uh, of PhD students who submitted the doctoral dissertation, 35% of them, they plan to work at the university, 25% they want to make a postdoc also at the university, and 40% they, they, they plan to work at the industry, okay? So in most of the countries around the world, if you want to stay at the university and become an academic teacher and a professor researcher, you need a PhD, okay? So if this is your dream of your career path, you must do the PhD. The same is important around the world. So with the PhD from our university, you can be employed at any other university around the world. And we have many our colleagues, our graduates that are working in the United States, Western Europe, and so on. Okay. Uh, so the most default one is like be an academic teacher. The another uh, option is this postdoc. So um, it is uh, as usually two or three years spent uh, in another university, in another country. It strongly depends also on the on the field, on the discipline, because in some disciplines it is much more required to have a postdoc to next to have a permanent position at the university. Okay, so another possibility is the industry, and here we have this uh, huge world of R and D sector, and in Poland, observing this market for last thirty years, we can notice that more and more companies are are having the R and D departments. Uh, once again, an example from my field and from Wrocław. So in Wrocław, you have a very big location of Nokia, more than 4,000 people. And among these 4,000 people, there are probably hundreds of people do, doing R&D, many of them with, with PhD, okay? And many of our graduates are working in, at Nokia. We also have implementation documents. And these people are... Uh, um, so the PhD, in many cases, is a must if you apply for a position in the R&D department. And as I know, there are larger companies, but also startups in Wrocław, around Wrocław in Poland, that uh, have uh, higher and higher demand for people with PhD. Also, we can apply to R&D departments in companies around the world. So once again, uh, in most of the positions, there is a requirement of having the, the PhD. And finally, you can do any other job because uh, doing PhD is a very nice journey and very big adventure. And you can gain a lot of skills that are quite useful in many activities of your life. So there are different career paths. And finally, I want to say about my story, story of my PhD students. So up to now, 10 of them uh, completed the PhD and five of them work at our university. Uh, two of them are working at the university in North America, one in Canada, uh, the second in the United States. And three of them are in industry, uh, one is in the United States. Okay, so quite diverse. Once again, it can depend on the on the discipline, and also it is possible to have a let's say more combined career path, which is quite popular in Western Europe. I hope that in Poland it will be similar. So, for instance, some people are doing PhD, then they go to industry, and after a few years they come back to university with some uh, nice experiences, and they combine cooperation with, uh, with industry and doing research. Yes, so there are many many options. And also with PhD, you can find a, a job around the world. Yes. So if you uh, like to travel, it is quite nice uh, job uh, because in many countries they, there are universities, there are ND departments, and you can also combine your the, the job you like, but also with some maybe spending time in some nice places. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, very possibilities. Very impressive. Uh, so maybe before. Uh, we say bye, I will summarize uh, who joined us today. Uh, first of all, the Dean of the Doctoral School, Professor Krzysztof Wolkowiak, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Professor Agnieszka Włomańska, Wise Dean for the Doctoral Students, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Aleksandra Kaczmarek, Kaczmarek, PhD student. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, with us, there is also Natalia Tyszkiewicz, PhD student and also president of the Doctoral Students Council. Thank you very much. That was 
an open day at the doctoral school at WUST. My name is Zuzanna Pavlak. Thank you so much for um, all of the insight. Thank for all our uh, dear guests today. Thank uh, you, dear participants, also for joining us today. Uh, on today's uh, live, on today's YouTube stream, I really hope you get the information you were looking for. Um, and fingers crossed for all of you guys. I am sure you will make it.